Happy St. Patrick's Day! Welcome everybody to episode 152 of The China Show. Yes. And once again, we've got a jam-packed show for you today. Cheers uh, to all the Irish folk out there. Well, we both have a little bit of Irish in us. I think so. The 23 yeah. and me. Yeah, yeah, we both had, we're from the same part, like Cork or something. And anyway. as you guys know, uh, Winston is a big fan of Ireland and Irish people. By the way, no, we have to... What? We have to do something special. And okay. It's a traditional Irish thing to do. You know, in the traditional Irish springs of green food coloring that they have around the island. I never really got all this uh, green stuff. But it's yeah, all about, you know, it's a green island, you know. I think it's all about like, whoop, wrong one. That's water Whoa! cooler. Oh, okay. I don't think he's celebrating St. Patrick's yeah, Day. Yeah, it's supposed to be all day. about uh, this. <laughs> Is that uh, my goal? Yes, exa exactly. <laughs> I'm a leprechaun, my dear. <laughs> Is that me pot of gold? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you uh, get a lot of Irishism, especially after this beer hits you. Yeah. yeah. So what are you supposed to do with this beer? Uh, you're supposed to turn it green. Okay. Does this work? This is something you that... shake it around and mix it around. Yeah. Okay. And watch we'll it disappear goes. because guess what? We use a green. Yeah, look, it is. It's disappearing. Look at that. <laughs> it's slowly disappearing. disappearing. Yeah. So anyway, I thought I'd quickly fill you in on what you can expect from today's show, guys. Sure. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about this uh, ridiculous uh, case in China now where China's Mr. Beast has been, well, erased from existence. Yeah, he's, he's done. Done so. We, we're going to be covering a lot of the uh, very important things that are happening in China, including the arrest of Guo and Gui, you know, Miles Guo. Yep. That's coming up. Lots of other stuff I in know between. Is... Uh, Miles Quok. Yeah, as you guys, as <laughs> the Quok is ticking. <laughs> some people, <laughs> you know, what some I'm people saying? have a fascination with pronouncing his name wrong. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Hey, look at that. Cheers. Now it's, uh, it's, yeah, completely invisible. It's very good. It's a very good shade of green here. May as well not be drinking anything. That no, no, tastes a, good. I thought that would be a good gag. You, you did get Heineken, though. I feel like you could have gotten a. Anyway, tastes good. I could have gotten Irish beer. Yeah, you could have. But you know, how do you turn Guinness green? If you put food coloring in there, it'll just be black. <laughs> Guinness. <laughs> Little pro tip here. Guinness tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, let's uh, yes. saunter right into what's new, everybody. And we're going to talk about what's new um, in relation to China. Um, and we do have quite a lot to, to go through over here. Once I pull up the actual thing, here it is. Uh, we're going to start out with something kind of interesting. Now, what would you say is going on here? Um, this is what what looks to be a very realistic uh, AI. Mm. Um, so, for your listeners, it is a terrible, terrible representation of AI. Again, when China says AI, they don't actually mean AI as much as something generated on a computer. It's like it's like something that they don't understand. It's when the Chinese I mean, government, yeah, talks, when the about government talks about AI. Because this kind of thing is not AI. No. This is a simple sort of uh, input output type situation. AI We don't have to listen to the whole thing. What I want you guys to know is that uh, people's daily and just play mm -hmm. it. It's fine. I turned, the volume is not too loud, I don't think. Are you sure? Okay, it's mad loud. Mad loud. I'll just pause it on this rubbish. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, People's Daily, which is China's like fantastic, beautiful newspaper, yeah, um, known for just promoting the truth yeah. from the CCP. Mm -hmm. uh, People's Daily is full-on propaganda, and they decided to create this AI thing. They are seriously gung-ho right now. If you go on any state media right now, it's all about AI supremacy. Like, yeah. we will be the future of AI. Everyone's lost. We are going to be AI forward. Yes. And I really don't think they know what AI is, like you said. No. So they came up with this uh, kind of like this, it's called like a virtual reporter. Yes. But it's not just a reporter. You can ask her questions, and then she'll give you answers. But what it turned out to be was just pre-made answers to of stuff. Course. It's not interactive. I mean, if you're going to call this stuff AI, then something like Siri or or, you know, Alexa or anything is like way ahead of this. Google. Yeah. You know, like you can ask Google questions and it gives you answers. Yeah. No shit. It's called, yeah, it's much better than Baidu, that's for sure. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> the focus of this, though, is on the two sessions. Of which, course. As you know, if you weren't here before, is China's biggest political meeting where they discuss what they've already decided. Yeah. And it's some semblance of like appearing like some sort of democracy or something. It's actually just their bullshit principles from the authoritarian government that they put out to the public. Yeah. And uh, so this is just, uh, it was just an elaborate, it looks kind of like something you might see on the internet from 1998. Yeah. I mean, this this kind of uh, virtual personality 
what do you even call it? Like an e personality, virtual, whatever. This has Definitely been not around. E girl, that's for sure. No, I mean, but seriously, since about uh, I remember them coming up with this stuff in like the the late nineties. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like, I used to have this thing called Hell. Yeah, and it was like this little thing you could change the, like the avatar into a woman or a computer or a dog or whatever, and you could talk to it, and it would it was pretty robust for what you could do, and that was in the late nineties, yeah. dude. I mean, they had freaking bonsai, buddy. Yeah, yeah it might have been malware, but yeah, <laughs> it was, exactly. It's more yeah. in, damn well more interactive than this. Sure, <laughs> and a lot more interesting. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, they, leave it to the CCP to take all fun out of everything. Yeah. This yeah. isn't fun. No, it's not fun. Well, how much of that stuff? Anyway, let's move past that because are we going to talk about the Baidu jet, chat GTP, uh, GPT? Yeah, this, this is it is GPT? GPT. G, yeah. GPT. Um, it's it's knock lined off. up right here. Okay. So, so explain what happened. Yeah, so I'll give you a little little heads up here. The Baidu is trying to rival Microsoft in their chat GPT thing. I took the audio out of this. Okay. So. Um, and you know what chat GPT is? It's AI. You can tell it to write a script for you for a movie. You mm-hmm. can tell it to freaking, you know, write song lyrics. You, you can, can ask it to, it to, to, to just like, yeah, tell me about this person. And yeah, then it actually tell me about this up. person. You could use it as search engine. You could write, use it to write term papers yeah. for college. Anyway, it's very intelligent. It's constantly evolving, right? Yeah. Machine learning. And China is like, well, we need to get ours out before anyone else. <laughs> Microsoft got theirs out first, right? Sure. Because theirs isn't ready. It sucks, and it's literally just a copy, right? Well, I mean, here's the thing. How can they bring it out first? They need something to copy. Correct. I mean, th- That's look, not a joke. It, this is the absolute truth when it comes to these Chinese government-led um, you know, programs like this. It's not possible to innovate this kind of thing in China because you just don't have that um, atmosphere, you know, that kind of place where people can creatively grow. You have to wait for something to first be produced and then you grab it and then you can modify it and you can make it better if you want. You can yeah. change it, add features, but you still have to wait for that thing to exist first. Yeah. Um, and that's what we've seen throughout modern Chinese history. Obviously, ancient China is very different. They're very good at, at uh, of course. you know, inventing things and there's some some of the great inventions come from ancient China. But these days... Unfortunately, like the Soviet Union, they must wait for something to come out as an example. Yeah. Anyway, so what happened? whole spiel about gunpowder, by the way. This is bullshit theory going around that you hear in like universities and they're like, the Chinese were so peaceful that they even had the power of destruction when they invented gunpowder, but they didn't use it for violent purposes. Like, bitch, you think <laughs> those warlords wouldn't have used gunpowder to wipe out their freaking enemies if they had the if they had the idea? Yeah. Are you crazy? Oh no, they definitely they they had like cannon things. Yeah, no that. shit. That's my point. Yeah. Anyway, going back to this, mm-hmm. um, Chat GPT. Uh, so what, they were doing this uh, live demo that wasn't live. So mm-hmm. the whole point is when you have like these AI things. Go back oh, yeah, to I'll go back to this. Yeah, this. So, so I think it's quite important that this wasn't mm-hmm. like a, we're going to type something and get an answer. This is, we're going to show you a video yeah. of a pre-recorded thing where we typed something and got an answer. Right. So mm-hmm. what they did here was they were supposed to show a live thing. And that's what mm-hmm. that's what's going to make this impressive is yeah. that, oh, like the audience maybe shouts out stuff to ask it or, mm-hmm. you know, it's an interactive experience. Yeah. But no, it was completely non-interactive. They lost almost 10% of their investment. Right? Yeah, people dropped. They were like, hang on Wh- a second. While yeah. the show was happening. It was yeah. broadcast live, right? People pulled out of idea. I believe they lost like $3 billion in, in investment. Yeah. And people are like, yo, this is terrible. And yeah. they even said, in the if I translated, they even said like uh, in the, the live show, mm. they're like, yeah, it's not ready yet, but the market demands that we do this, like yeah. to show you guys. Yeah, it was such it a disaster. Yeah. Such a disaster. Yeah. <clears throat> Another thing that's a disaster is the fact that they uh, couldn't even come up with their own user interface. Mm. Could they? No. Um, it looks, I mean, here's ChatGPT, for those of you who don't know, take a look at that. And... Um, should straight afterwards have the Baidu. What did they call it? They have a name for it, like Ernie or something, isn't it? Something weird like that. Yeah, but look, the Ernie, the, Ernie, the, yeah. the the user interface um, is exactly the mm-hmm. same. You know, obviously just different color here. But if you look at the side and the way it works, they couldn't even come up with their own user interface that's different, which is you know it's pathetic. Color. Yeah, would, I mean, it's just because it's in night mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, you get the idea. It's not very impressive, the Baidu equivalent. And Baidu is China's Google. <laughs> What's going on with the moon over here? Uh, so, you guys remember we found this shill. Yeah, communist Crisco. Uh, his name is uh, Fidel Crisco. Yeah, Fidel Crisco, yeah. Uh, he was, he goes around with the, he doesn't speak Chinese, but he lived in China for like 20 plus years. Roams around, does CCP propaganda for state media, and he does it by 
jam it out on acoustic guitar, right? Yes. And he sings bullshit songs. Turns out he's quite high up in this thing called Natal Fed or something, which is Some a weird thing. It's like a communist cult <laughs> in in America, and he was arrested as part of a raid because they had a weapons cache and things. It's he's crazy. got quite a backstory, and so China is the perfect place for him because he can go and teach the Chinese people how to be good communists. Yeah, it's a it's a whole thing. But yeah. the joke there was that yeah. his uh, playing sucks, and we had a whole gag and a bit that you put together. It's yeah. hilarious, and. Uh, we actually had a uh, a friend slash fan yeah. reach out. Um, he who must not be named. Yes. And uh, anonymously reached out and said, "I was so inspired that I wanted to do a cover of his Fidel Crisco song, The Moon." Yes. So he did a cover. Hey everybody, how you folks doing out there? Well, I wanted to get this song out by Mid Autumn Festival, but I was a little late. I've been pretty busy with songwriting and. Uh, this is about the Mid-Autumn Festival. It's better late than never. It's a little ditty I wrote called The Moon. The Moon. Mid-Autumn. The Moon. Mid-Autumn. favorite part yeah the moon mid-autumn the moon Open wow time, just wanted to say big shout out to him um a great cover yes for a great song <clears throat> absolutely it really captures the feeling of the holiday i think mm-hmm so uh, for those of you who don't know, Chinese state media, they absolutely love to do these fluff pieces. Uh, and they do this often. And, you know, I've been involved in these kind of things in the past. You know, um, what they like to do is they try to portray China as this uh, incredible place. And by the way they do this is they find foreigners that have moved to China or that live in China. And then they get them to tell this story about, like, how amazing China is. Tell That's, a good China story. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. Um, I was part of a thing with CRI, which was just focusing on South Africans and, you know, how, you know, they're living in China, what it was like and stuff. I've done this kind of thing before. Obviously not. Not sure. If you, if you watch my video, I just talk yeah. about this is what I do. This is et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of people are like, wow, China's so incredible. It's so amazing. I love every part about it. This like the alleviation of poverty. They always throw in propaganda points. Well, they, they're told to. Yeah. That's yeah. the whole point. You were, you were there before. Before you did the, state, the yeah. state media before they forced people to shill. Before the ch- tell a good China yeah. story thing even yeah. was a thing. You just did a thing. Sure, I did yeah. a thing for TV. I'm just saying, like, this is what they do very often. Sure. But, of course, the um, more prominent the country the person comes from, the better. Yeah. So if they can say, like, French archaeologist or uh, architect, I should say. I don't think you get many French archaeologists, to be honest. Why not? I mean, I just don't... I bet there's shit tons of French archaeologists. Yeah, they're looking through the menu in, in like an American diner and saying, this is this is rubbish, you know. This food is not... You know, that's yeah, that's their archaeology. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like with a beret. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is um, they, they'll find people from, um, you know, first world countries, and they try to focus on those, and they'll be like... You know, like the moon guy, they find him like, oh, American so on and so on, songwriter, and they put him up there. Um, and here's where it backfires a little bit. Because what you're about to see is Chinese state media going out and saying an American found, you know, this place so amazing. Now, let me explain something to you quick. Yeah. Uh, I put this together and I yeah. was shocked mm-hmm. at the audacity that China had to do this because what's happening is that because China is so unpalatable now yep. and so hard to live in because of how nationalistic it's become, mm-hmm. they've really pushed away a lot of Westerners, right? Like sure. a lot of people that are from countries that are say, yeah, I, I can take China's bullshit sometimes, but like it's gotten too bad. Yeah. I'm out, right? People from England, Canada, uh, America, right? Yeah. So they've run out of these Western shills and they have to go pluck them from other like developing countries. Yeah, you have to also understand that uh, first worlders, they don't need to put up with crap because, you know, you come from a country that's really nice and it's easy, even if you didn't have a great life back in the States or in Canada, you know, it, it's very easy for you to move around and travel yeah. and to go places. But if you come from, and I know from experience, from a third world developing country, um, you're looking for opportunity anywhere, yeah. right? 
And that's one of the big draws for me to China was the fact that there wasn't a lot of opportunity for me in South Africa. So to go to China and find all this work, I was very grateful for it. You know, I yep. made a video about it and everything was the, the opportunity that was there at the time. And so I was willing to put up with the bullshit that most people wouldn't, you know? So my sure. Canadian and American peers, they run into one little roadblock along the way. Oh, this visa is too difficult to apply for. Or, oh, they're giving me trouble with this and that. Oh, I don't like this or that. They just leave because yeah. they could. Sure. But I couldn't just leave. So, you know, um, you will find people that come from developing countries will stick around and be will be there. Like you say, most of the first worlders, unless they're criminals or have a reason not to go back, have pretty much left. Yeah. You know? But you know what's important for China is yeah. that they choose first world people or Americans in this mm. in this in this respect to promote this Chinese propaganda yeah. because it looks so much more credible. Yeah. yeah. If it comes from a Russian person or whatever, a Chinese person will watch that and be like, ah, it's just a Russian person. They're kind of like on our level. You know yeah. what I mean? But if an American says it, yeah. you know, this is the bullshit the logic in yeah. the Chinese government. If an American says good things about the Chinese government, it's so much more believable, right? Sure. So let's look at this, the lengths that they have gone. Yeah. To, to achieve now let's this Let's take purpose. a look at this, uh, this American over here. Let's take a quick look. I'll get us out of here. Let's go. <laughs> My from England. Oh, wait, what I happened? I have been to many Chinese cities. You but jumped my forward. Oh, I'm dude. sorry, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get into it. Okay, sorry, here we go. Hope everybody enjoyed it. My name is Holy. My name is Holy. I came to China from US seven years ago. I am Richard from England. I have been to many Chinese cities but my favorite city is Luoyang. My wife is from Luoyang and we live here. Luoyang is a city that combines classical and modern architecture with a long history and great culture. Ancient and modern reflections, poetry and faraway places. Not only I think so, more and more foreigners live and work in Luoyang. Over the years, I have integrated into a local life and I would like to call myself a local person. I've been trying to learn Chinese and it's been a very interesting experience. Some names of Chinese dishes confuse, but food in this city is very delicious. Like for example, there is a dish called wife in a wife cake. Infrastructure is very well developed. In past seven years, I've got my family here. Loyan has given me a lot, and I'm glad and thankful for all these years. I have witnessed the rapid development of Loyan with the elevated bridges and the opening of subway lines, making the city more convenient for transportation, which makes me proud of Loyan. Before coming, I felt that it should be more traditional city with lots of stereotypes, but I came here to find that China has unique cultural heritage and treats its guests like its own family. At the same time, there is a youthful and vibrant side nice. to this city that reflects the past and the present. I have met many young people here who share my passion and for music. They are warm, friendly, and have unique preferences about music. And this city too gives young people unlimited possibilities to persist their love and dreams. I have a home, a love, happiness, and contentment. <laughs> go back to holy real quick can you yeah. go to the the part where he says he's american yeah i mean the, here's you have to understand that the title of this video was american expat finds new life in loyang or something like that it's this bro why the guy's not wearing shoes but <laughs> why though you know why i think 
he gets away with saying he's American. Why? Is that he had a stopover flight in Georgia. <laughs> but it was but he's like Georgia but yeah. he thought it was American Georgia. Yeah. He's like, I come from America. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing no, I can No, he said I come from Georgia. And they were like, Oh, you must <laughs> be American. Like, oh, he's American. But I mean His name is Holy, dude. If the why is he wearing a China they t-shirt? They really force this one yeah. down your throat, don't they? It's so disingenuous for the guy to be like, I'm American. That is a Russian. <laughs> yes. I mean, if he is American by some weird stretch of the imagination, then I apologize. But yeah. in, for all <clears throat> intents and purposes, he's not from what you can see. Yeah. He's reading a script, which he's struggling with. I mean, he could be Serbian. He's some Eastern yeah. European. Yeah. Um, you know, and you can My emigrate. Name is right? Holy. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Holy. I came to China from U.S. seven years ago. You can't even say U.S. I know. He's a pooper person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a person. <laughs> anyway, he goes on and on. But this is, I found this to be hilarious because they're scraping the barrel. Yeah. Not for quality of people. He could have said, I'm from Serbia. Or I'm yeah, whatever. Yeah, why not? That's fine. Just be honest. Yeah. There's nothing. But... <laughs> guy looks totally fine. Yeah. He doesn't wear shoes. <laughs> You know, I caught him in that I song Nuvi Goot uh, from, <laughs> <laughs> from yeah. early 2000s. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, they've done this is not the first time they've done this. So uh, they have to pick a, a first world person. I've noticed there's been a huge focus on Law Young recently. By yeah, have you massive. Noticed? So they obviously have a big propaganda push for Law Young. They rounded up all the foreigners that live there. Yes. And they're like, hey, you know what? Maybe, you know, you know, they probably didn't coach him to be American. He no. probably told the kindergarten where he teaches English that he's American. That's, this that's is usually how it goes. So he's sticking to his story. Yeah, but I I feel like I feel like they needed an American. Yeah, of to course. Promote their bullshit. Uh, yeah, sure. Anyway, go to the end of this. I just wanted to refresh people's memories of uh, mm-hmm. Richard from England. Oh yes, uh, you did. You uh, didn't put it. I in did there. export it in there, huh? Mm, Weird. Guess you didn't. Anyway, um, yeah. just to once again show you, the propaganda has no shame in China. Yeah. Hey, at least he's wearing sandals in that shot. He's very tall. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just um, yeah. you do find this uh, ridiculous. Oh, there he is. Oh, his name's Holy. Infrastructure yeah. is very well developed. I like that they said that during that scene. Yeah. He's not even in sand, he's no. just like in a park. Yeah, there's very tasteful panda seesaw. Yeah. You know what I found really weird is you don't get seesaws here in America. What are you talking about? Show me a seesaw. I haven't seen one. I take my kid to the park, I've never seen a seesaw here. Show me a seesaw. Bro, there's literally seesaws everywhere. Show me one. Okay, I have, I, I'll take you somewhere. Okay, maybe when you grew up and you just forgotten they no. removed them for like safety purposes nope. or something. I'm not seeing them is what I'm saying. I'll, I'll take you to a seesaw All right. after the weather's nice. Yeah, okay. Just saying. I'll anyway. Take I'll take you yeah, to a seesaw. Okay, I'll see a, I will see a saw. You will. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's Chinese propaganda. So are we ready to move on to the main segment? Is that the end of this? Yeah, because I think we're going straight into uh, the Mr. Beast thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, we are. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's move on from the silly propaganda. We're going to go straight into soft power hour, guys. This is our main <laughs> segment ridiculous. of the show. Yeah, he is, he is ridiculous. No, they think you're ridiculous oh, for saying there's no seesaw. There's no seesaws. <laughs> Not in our area, anyway. Yeah. What? I haven't seen a seesaw. Literally, I know a What school. about merry-go-rounds? I've seen those plastic ones they've got here, but like you know the old metal ones where you hold them. What? <laughs> anyway, uh, you let's... know this the city I come from. Yeah, is the merry-go-round capital of the world. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It's literally where they're from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just pulling your leg, by the way. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. So, Pull guys, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to soft power hour now. Everybody should know who Mr. Beast is. Uh, I personally don't watch his stuff, but I know the gist of what he is. He's oh, the most for younger people. Yeah, he's like the most popular YouTuber. Yep, and he like buys. He'll buy like a hundred iPhones and throw them into the sea or something, and say, "Go catch him." And they're yours. That type of thing, I, I guess. He also got like <laughs> a whole village like cataract surgery. And stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. he does like he basically does giveaways and charity. Yeah. That's his main thing, right? It's good stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm for it. I'm 100 percent for it. So he goes out there and he spends a huge amount of money to treat people or surprise people or whatever and get reactions to things. Yeah. Uh, and that's what he does, right? Yeah. So there's a guy in China who's not actually Mr. Beast. <laughs> at all. But really he, he 
he's been doing a thing for a number of years. Maybe you can explain his, yeah, hun- his hundred yuan thing. But hundred yuan, by the way, right? is okay. It's like twenty bucks. What is it now? Yeah, let's find out. Uh, fourteen bucks. Wow, that's dipped. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. It used to be like twenty. Yeah, so fourteen. Uh, Fourteen dollars, right? You, this is low audio. You just have it in the okay. background. Just roll this. So this guy, right? Yeah. He basically he got a big following in China because what he did was he started taking like a, a fixed amount of money, like hundred RMB. So let's say yeah. four, fifteen bucks. Let's say fifteen bucks, right? Yeah. And be like, what can we buy with this? And mm-hmm. the idea was that look at how much prices have risen for things, right? Yeah. There's a bit of social commentary, but it was you know very like law abiding he's not going yeah. around like questioning the motives of the government and stuff he's like yo listen stuff's gotten really expensive right yeah it's like it used to be this much it's this much look at how little i can buy with this amount of money right sure and then he would go around and try to find ways to maybe save money mm. oh maybe i should buy this brand of milk or this brand of eggs or like if you actually this egg comes from the same farm as this expensive branded one so you should buy the cheaper one sure it's like consumer advice right yeah um i know that this probably isn't fascinating to most people out there but for some reason in china this has a oh, massive no, niche there, there's there's a lot to it because a lot of chinese society remember it, it goes it's, on forever oh, it does remember it's like it was originally an agrarian society and yeah. the whole thing of trade and buying and making deals and stuff is incredibly important i yeah. mean come on you know your chinese family that's one of their biggest things to look for sales and deals and how to you know get the best you know, value for money and stuff. It's a huge part of Chinese culture. It is. Yeah. So. Anyway, so Mr. East is here. He goes around and he buys stuff. Mr. For what? East? Mr. East. Yeah, okay. Nice. That's cool, Mr. East. I yeah. got it from chat. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. East goes around and buys stuff and shows people how to save money. Yeah. So it wasn't about any sort of like, um, I'm going to go give money to people on the Yeah, street. but at the same time, it was in a way like, here's how you can save yes, money. Yes, yes, yes. And what, what I'm trying to say is it morphed into something else uh, but really only with one video. Yes. Right? So what ended up happening here was, if you, you skip forward, uh, you guys get the idea, right? Yes. Yeah, go around showing prices. I don't think you guys give a shit about prices in China. You don't, you don't want to know what the price of rice is, you know, <laughs> per gin or whatever? <laughs> this is, like there was a, one of his things he did here, right? Yeah. Was he would do the one hour purchasing power wage challenge. So it started off like, how much can I buy with 100 RMB? Yeah. Then it became a little bit more interesting and niche by saying yeah. like, in China, or at least in Chengdu where he is, the average person yeah. makes nine nine yuan per hour. Right? Yeah, nine yuan being about dollar fifty. Right? Sure. By the way, that's that's normal in sure. China. That's not a poor wage. No, no, that's normal. So like a dollar fifty uh, per hour. What can I buy with that amount of money in a supermarket? Could yeah. could I sustain myself with that yeah. wage? Right. And so he'd go around and do that. But again, it morphed into something else. And we want to show you the clip uh, in question here. The, the reason people started calling him Mr. Beast is because he did some sort of charity uh, type thing. Yeah, scroll, scroll yeah I'll scroll. I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, I ended up translating this. I didn't translate the whole thing because I'm just going to run you guys through some of the more mundane parts here. So give, give you guys some context before I tell you what happened. Uh, yeah. This is him talking about it afterwards. So we'll go back to that? Yeah, we're going to go back to that. It's, it's not a big deal. Okay, okay here. here it is. So this okay. is the clipping question. I'll get us out of here. Well, let's read this out. Yeah. What is it? It's like uh, so he goes. Uh, he's gonna do a challenge in Chengdu, right? That's yeah. just an intro. Don't worry I know, but I want to see what he called it. It's like Chengdu challenge. Yeah. Find a random elderly person and take them to the supermarket. Right. And use their one-day pension to go shopping. Yeah. So I mean, that's the that that's makes sense, right? So mm. you're like, how much uh, does your pension pay you? If you broke it down. Yeah. Like, yeah. so you get this much amount. So how much is it for a day? Yeah. And then we're gonna see how much you can buy with that. And what he ended up doing is using her month's pension worth of money. Yeah, right. as you'll see, he tried to like he he tried to flag down a bunch of old people, and they all like get lost, yeah, and yeah. they were ignoring him. And then finally, one woman stopped to talk to him. Well, let's just see, see what, oh, what happened. Like, well, I might you 
孩子，工程师他有两个儿子，还在读书，又没钱。那你平时花钱怎么办呢？花钱。嗯。就去我家找他。那这是去干嘛呢？我去买个米呀嘛。这样，我我跟你去超市，你买什么，我来给钱。今天要买点什么？我就是买点米，我也没几个人。咱们今天给婆婆买点米，也要买点肉。就是一个月那个农保，一百零七块。一个月给你一百零七块。That's the most important thing here. Okay, so she, um, you know, for those of you listening, perhaps yeah. she's she's got the a sob story about like, oh, you know, I came here with my son, and I have to try to do little bits of work here and there. But you know, right now I don't have an income. Yeah. And the most important thing though is that her her pension amounts to 107 RMB a month. Yeah. So that's when it. she she used to be a nanny and do make a pension, mm -hmm. she's making 300 a month, right? Yeah. So that's like what 30 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. But now she's relying on her pension, yeah. which is it's called agricultural insurance, which it's is a pension. it's a pension for like uh, like farmer types right like mm -hmm. out in the country, rural people. Sure. So she's talking about it being 107 RMB. So that's 15 bucks a month. Yeah. Right? So 15 dollars a month pension. Now I'm sure a lot of you out there are starting to realize why this guy was canceled. Because if you know anything about the Chinese uh, propaganda, their number one thing is that nobody's poor in China anymore, that, you know, they've done all this poverty alleviation. Yes. And I think we can all agree that uh, $15 a month for a pension is, is not lifted out of poverty in the slightest. No. Because to live off $15 a day is tough for most people, never yeah. mind in a month. I mean, what, what is that, like over 60% of China or something lives less on less than like... I don't know, some ridiculous amount, five dollars a day or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so here, yeah, this is the context: is that she gets one hundred and seven RMB a month for yeah. this. Yeah. So he's like, he's figuring this out during this interview. Yeah. As his friend films this, and she's saying everyone gets that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so he's going around and like, oh, let's get some they rice, food, let's get yeah. some this She's really nice. She's like, you know, she doesn't want to take the piss and like get mm -hmm. expensive stuff. She's just picking out stuff that she would normally get. Yeah. Um, but he's and, like, have a little more, you know, because yeah. he's paying, you know. So at the at the end of the day, he wants to spend her, her instead of an hourly, uh, sorry, daily pension, yeah. he ends up spending the same amount as her no, monthly. That's, that's the context you need to understand is that before he's like, I'm going to go find out how much a pension is per day and spend that on someone, yeah. right? But it turns out it's so low that he's, he's like, I have to spend the whole month's yeah, pension of course. on their stuff. And I mean, the thing is that, that he re reiterates here that your pension from the government is yeah. $15 a month. He keeps asking her that, you know, and she keeps yeah. confirming that, yeah. which is, this is the embarrassing thing to the Chinese government. <laughs> He goes on, yeah. And so he confirms that, yeah, we're going to buy $15 worth of goods today, right? You, yeah. You keep like, yeah. Buying. So they pick out some meat. She said, I've never had meat before, which she actually means like, I don't eat meat. Yeah, that's, that doesn't mean I've never eaten meat it's before. It's kind of like if you say like, yeah, it's like, uh, I'm dirt poor. I'm dying of hunger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm dirt poor is a good one. Yeah. Um, so he picks out some meat, gets her an extra meat. He asked her, like, do you have a fridge at home? Because she's going to have to put this extra meat in there. He bought yeah. her a couple extra pieces of meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is quite uh, quite common, especially in the rural areas. Oh, yeah. It's like, I'll put my, I'll put it in my neighbor's fridge. Because she doesn't have a fridge at home. No, so yeah. she's not going to be able to store yeah. the extra meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, let's see. He goes and picks out some eggs for her and stuff. And trying to, like, basically get her enough food for the month. Uh, so she doesn't have to ask her son Very generous, money. very nice of him. Yeah. And in the end, it ends up being 127. So that's like, you know, it ends up being about 20 bucks uh, US uh -huh. for all that stuff. And then uh, actually, I thought this was kind of funny that the checkout lady goes, what department are you from? Like asking prying questions, like basically you have to understand the context. You're not allowed to go around and film interviews with people. No. Right. This is actually illegal in China. Yeah. And people are paranoid about it, too, because there's so many notices that go out about not spreading rumors and all this kind of stuff. So people immediately get suspicious. Sure. And he's like, ah, you know, he gets kind of snippy. He has yeah, like, mind your own business. Yeah, basically. mind your own business. Like, what, do yeah. you have a problem? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So Mr. East talks to, to her a little bit mm -hmm. on the way out. And, um, 
he's like basically right there he said like what's your income she's like i don't have an income right mm-hmm. so he's just chatting where they're on the way out and uh you know gets to know this rural lady's kind of position gets to understand her situation right yeah now if you looked at this from the outside this is like the most normal ass video ever in history yeah, it's a mankind. nice it's a feel-good video like yeah. you're helping an old lady you know it's like giving her a month's worth of groceries basically yeah in a day so go on to this i want to show you some screens after this something yeah. very very bad happened like right after this went up Mm -hmm. this is getting a lot of attention and it wasn't getting attention because it was shocking people it was mm -hmm. getting attention because people were like yep that's what my grandma has to deal with yep that's yep, my neighbor you know, I, everyone knows someone that makes this little right yeah and uh either that or some people from the you know the center of the city is saying wow it's so dire out there and this is actually in the center of Chengdu. this is not a in a, even in a rural area yeah right so people are like this is sh a little bit shocking yeah so all of a sudden, his all of his accounts. Well, he had uh, his Weibo was big, and then his uh, Billy Billy was pretty big. Yeah, uh, all of his social media out. accounts got shut down. Yeah, they basically just wiped him off the the internet. Uh, yeah, and you can see here if you go try to go to his. Uh, yeah, it's still playing. I guess still it's... playing. Still playing. Still, it's playing. one of your you know long slides. One of my long slides. Yeah, really Seamus long slides. He he loves long slides. Yeah, this is Billy Billy, which yeah. is like YouTube, basically. It's like YouTube. It's got more like yeah, anime type stuff. But anyway, well, it's kind of anime themed, yeah. but it's it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, he gets wiped off of that. People are like, "What's going on?" So, mm -hmm. turns out, um, you know, if you go back and and see some of the discussion, people were talking about it. Yeah, and people are like, "This is." ridiculous sure is like basically people are saying in china have we gotten to the point where you can't even show real life yeah. uh, and the people started making jokes they're like it must be the american foreign forces they yeah, like exactly. hired this old woman to pretend like she's poor yeah and that some of the best commentary i saw was really self-affirming for us and i wish it wasn't self-affirming yeah do you remember when Xi, uh, Xi Jinping declared that poverty had been uh, eradicated in China, right? Mm -hmm. And we said, absolutely not. I mean, we yeah. have literal video footage of villages that haven't changed at all, that are yeah. in deep, deep, deep poverty. And it's not that poverty was eradicated. What actually happened was poverty didn't go away. It just became illegal to say that there was poverty in China. Yeah. And we really didn't want that to be true. We, we would hope there was some sort of reform leading up to that, but that's actually not true. And you can yeah. see this from this video. You are not allowed to show that China is still poor. Well, not that long ago, we reported on that guy who filmed the rural wedding. Yeah. And the rural wedding, everyone's like really like without shoes, sitting on the floor, on the dirt floor, eating But it wasn't like a scraps. protest piece. No, it was just like, it hey, was a wedding. he was literally filming like a relative's wedding yeah. or something. And he got all his accounts banned for yeah. showing that. I, I believe he got arrested. Yeah, I think he did. Anyway, this is kind of where it's at right now. You don't know about the poverty in China because no one's allowed to talk about it. And when somebody does something as innocent as this, yes. you know, helping an old lady buy groceries because her pension is nothing, may as well be nothing yeah. every month. Uh, it's an embarrassment to the government. It goes against this whole poverty alleviation thing that they're saying. And so what do they do? They just get rid of their problem by deleting all of his accounts and saying this never happened. One user, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to point out and highlight a lot of these uh, Chinese netizens here that... Yeah. The vast majority of them are not stupid. Sure. But the only way they can kind of uh, protest this removal of his accounts is to make make jokes out of it, right? Yeah. So uh, one person, based, if I translate this, is, it basically means like he deserves to be banned because actually he was very deceitful. Because okay. he originally, because like he's spreading rumors and stuff yeah. and he lied. Because mm -hmm. he originally said he was only going to spend one day's wage, but he used to spend a whole month's wage. So that content <laughs> yeah. should be removed. Yeah, yeah for, for that lies. reason. Yeah, that's <laughs> yes. funny. Yep. Uh, and I love the ones that were like, you know, the, the thing that people in China are making fun of right now is the Chinese government constantly blaming America for everything. Yeah. And a lot, there was a lot of netizens in China that were like, oh, it must be the damn Americans. You yeah, know, exactly. No good. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely sad, though, because... His uh, response was really important. Maybe you can show his face to capture the feeling. Yeah. Um, in a, in the videos prior to this. Yeah, this one right here. Um, he, you know, to sum it up, he goes on and he made like an account on another thing that wasn't banned yet. Yeah. And he goes, "All my stuff's gone." Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he goes on to say, "I didn't go out there to be some sort of great mover of society. I'm mm -hmm. not going out there to be some massive famous like person that's changing the world." Yeah. I just wanted to earn a little money, like like from by making videos, right? 
and at the same time maybe maybe change society a little bit for the good yeah right? just to show the good in people yeah. right and if that's he was shocked you can sure. see the shock in his face he's like if that's what gets you removed here in our country and we get punished for that i i don't know what to do yeah because it is such a freaking it's it's a baseball bat to the kneecaps to anyone that wants to do anything good in china i think mm. it is this one user said it best he said he or she said if this is the, if this is where china is then we have to acknowledge what our society has become our society mm. has become a place for the chinese government where our government needs people to not only be apathetic but to not be charitable at all because if you're charitable you're standing out above everyone else mm -hmm. you're getting too much attention and you're showing the world that China is not fully developed yet, yeah. right? And that's a big problem. So they're trying to beat it out of us. It's better if we are callous and hate each other yeah. than to actually be a cohesive society. And a huge thing in Chinese propaganda is that we are collectivists. We take care of each other. We are unified. Mm -hmm. We are nationalists. Mm -hmm. We love our country and stuff. But actually, the Chinese government wants people to be nationalists and loyal to the state. Yeah. They want them to hate each other. Yeah. Like, for lack of better words. I mean, that's why you have all the problems with no good Samaritans and, yeah. and things like that, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's it's a very clear window into Chinese society. It honestly. is. Honestly. It is. And the way the government works. Yeah. Why the hell would you block this person for doing something charitable like this, you know? Isn't it so indicative mm -hmm. that he, ha you know, he started with a very small account and I, yeah. I, I had followed him for his like money Yeah, I'd seen him, seen him before. Yeah. I was following him because I wanted to see what prices, like what supermarket prices and food prices. I was thinking about doing a video on food prices skyrocketing in China. Because they have. They, they have, have, yeah. And I was watching some of his content um, you know, on Billy Billy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, very interested in this. And then all of a sudden, when I saw this kind of drama unfold, it made me realize, it hit me like a like a sack of bricks, that this is where we're at now. Mm. In China, there's no, you know, remember the gray area? Yeah. The gray area, you kind of do what you want as long as you're not poking at the government. The threshold for poking the government is now at ground level. The threshold is if too many people see what you're doing. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, it'd be unrelated yeah. to the government. Yeah, too many people, <clears throat> if you get too popular, then you're, you're a danger. Like, yes. Shut you down. FS in the chat says the Chinese government behaves like a personality disordered narcissist. Yeah. That's absolutely what it is. It's gotten to the point where Xi Jinping has surrounded himself with so many yes men and there's zero potential for self-criticism now mm -hmm. that there is no room for change for the good. And that's this is, you know, people are always like, oh, this country this country's on a bad path or whatever. Mm. China is on a very, very dark path right now. Correct. I know we're using this one, one instance anecdotally, but it's indicative of a greater problem in China. Oh, yeah. Big time. It's, it's dangerous. Yeah. Anyway, let's... Oh, uh, the last thing I want to say is the reason that he started to get okay. the attention yeah. was because there's a there's a, a want and a longing in Chinese society for watching people that help each other. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a need and want for that. People w liked that feeling. That's why that video was taken off. Yeah. It was a nice thing <clears throat> to do, right? Exactly. Because everybody uh, understands the struggle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> China, there's a lot of struggle going Life's on in struggle China. In you China. know? A lot of people don't seem to realize this. If you've grown up in a first world country or whatever, um, you know, things are kind of all already set. Sure, you get you do get struggles and difficulties in life. But in China, up until very recently, people were really struggling with poverty. Everybody has impoverished family members, you know? Or, or people they know. Yeah. And it's just one of those situations where um, everybody recognizes and understands what it's like. Yeah. You know, at least of a certain age. It's group. poor, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like I, China can look rich because you see those, uh, you know, those exchange students come over with their Lamborghinis and stuff. That is not Chinese society. No, those are just you know government connected, yeah. very rich people that come over. So it's like the the top one percent. Yes, you know? the average person in China is not a grossly wealthy person. No, not at all. And this is you know this shows that this is in a main a major major rich city by the way. Yeah, of course. Um, so anyway, is there anything else you want to say about that? Not really. I mean, I think it's tragic. Yeah, it's it's awful. The the fact that he's been censored and blocked, and that's something people have to also realize is when you talk about government censorship, this is government censorship. Yes, you know, this is real government censorship. Yeah. I know a lot of people like to rag on the West, like, oh, the government controls you, this and that. No, in China, they really do. Yeah, they really do control you. Um, and uh, are we going to talk about the TikTok thing later? Did you put that in? Yeah, that's in okay, uh, did put corner, that in. Okay, excellent. Um, but yeah, we'll get on to more of that later. But please, guys, when you try to compare uh, any kind of Western government censorship, remember, you can't compare it to the Chinese uh, no. censorship at all because they it's just apples and oranges. You can complain about your government doing certain things, but man... He's got nothing on China, I'll tell you that. No. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. I guess that's 
Is that the end of soft power? Yes. Oh, oh, let's that's, hear a word from both of our sponsors. Oh yeah, absolutely. So first, we're going to start out with most important, most important thing on a bike trip: beer. And the most important thing for a healthy lifestyle is a healthy diet. And that's why I'm proud to say this video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day, and originally I wanted to give it a try because I wanted better gut health, I wanted increased energy, I wanted immune system support, and I, I hate taking all these like 10 pounds of vitamins and pills and all these vegetables and stuff. It's so much more convenient to take AG1 in the morning before I even drink my coffee. It makes me feel amazing because I know I just did something really good for my body. It's got all the vitamins I need. It's got everything that my body craves throughout the day. Taking AG1 is so easy. It's the easiest thing you can do under a minute. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. And it's been part of millions of mornings since 2010. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's athleticgreens.com slash ADV. Check it out. Oh, we're back. Again, guys, what, what Whoa, happened Whoa, you squished us. Yeah, I did. Sorry, that's this weird setting. I felt like a little Mario, you know, like <laughs> when, he, when he loses yeah, the when mushroom. Yeah, when he loses the mushroom. Uh, again, thank you very much to Athletic Greens. <laughs> not uh, the other Mario. <laughs> yeah, not, not that guy, please. <laughs> uh, absolutely fantastic product. Stand behind it. I, I use it myself. In fact, it's St. Patrick's Day, so we probably should have... You know, I know, because it's green. Yeah, Athletic Greens right here. Unfortunately, we're only doing the green beer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we do have another sponsor, and this one is a fantastic sponsor, um, yeah. so stay tuned. Yeah, so uh, before we continue with all our topics, we've still got some great ones for you. Uh, there's another word from another one of our sponsors. What's in a name? And what's in an address? Why is it that your name and your address is worth money? Well, they certainly are worth money, but to the wrong kind of people. Data brokers. The underbelly of the internet. Have you ever wondered why, when you try to look something up on the internet, you're suddenly bombarded with adverts for the same thing? When suddenly you start to receive junk mail that seems to be related to things you've been looking up online? Well, this is the work of data brokers. This really gross feeling targeted advertisements and stuff, this didn't feel right. So I was super happy that we got to work with Incogni. Incogni is a fantastically easy product to use because all you have to do is create your Incogni account, put in your name and address, and they will literally go out there and find all of the companies that are using your data. Your leaked data, your name, your information, your phone number, all this kind of stuff. They will find these companies that are buying and selling your data, and they will send them a document that says they're legally bound to getting rid of your information. It's fantastic, and it's something that I absolutely love to use. If you go to incogni.com slash advpodcast, not only are you gonna be helping the channel, but there's also something else you're gonna be doing, helping yourself. If you go down below and use that link and then use the code ADV podcast, the first hundred people are going to get 60% off. That's a huge deal on a product that we absolutely put our name behind and love to use. So don't forget to go to incogni.com slash ADV podcast and use the code ADV podcast. You might be one of those first hundred people to get that 60% off. Well, I got to say something though. Uh, we tried out incogni and the the sort of junk mail that turns up in my mailbox has kind of gone away. It's pretty epic. Isn't it? It's pretty epic. Actually I actually works. love it. It's actually not works. a not a bullshit thing. Like yeah, I, I actually love it. works. Um, yeah. Anyway, so shall we move on? We shall. So everyone, um, by the way, St. Patrick's Day, you know, people like to wear these big leprechaun hats yeah. all the time. You know, kind of like... Uh, Is that me gold? What the yeah. are you? I'm a leprechaun, me dear. Here. So anyway, you know, I, if I was Jennifer Aniston, I would also be scared. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. There's big green hats that people wear. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it before, but we'll just tell people just in case. But to say you wear a green hat in Chinese, Dai Liu Maozi, means that your wife is cheating on you. Yeah. So if you wear a green hat, everyone will laugh and snicker behind your back. We always used to do that. If there was like a new employee from like England or yep. America or whatever, we'd always say like, oh, it's a Chinese tradition. Then we'd take them out to a restaurant and like to wear the green hat. We'd put a green hat on them. <laughs> like, wow, cool. And we'd teach them some bullshit, esoteric, like mm -hmm. deep meaning. Yeah, I can't remember the story. I did I did learn it once and it was something about a like some rich guy or something and his um his wife would make him wear a green hat and that was like a signal that her you know boyfriend could pop over for a quickie or something you know 
So when you see him leaving with a green hat, it means he's going out for like a long time or something like that. There was whatever, something like that. But to wear a green hat means you're you're cuckolded, basically. Yeah, yeah, he's so, tucking around. Yeah. So anyway, guys, let's uh, move on to our next segment over here, which is Woolmouth Corner, where we talk about the haters and what they're up to. Um, and well, what do we have in store for you today? <laughs> You know, uh, YouTube giving a warning to YouTube. Because okay, yeah. They, what are you gonna say to YouTube? Sometimes they suck. Mm-hmm. This is not real violence. This yeah. is Chinese state media mm-hmm. trying to brag about their their female soldiers, right? Right. It well, is not, but it is not real. Mm-hmm. When I say that, I mean there. No one's getting hurt in this. Yeah. Okay. Why does it look like Kim Jong Un or whatever? <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. You sure this is in North Korea? I believe. Yeah, it was China, dude. Boom. 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 But he's not actually coming into contact. He didn't notice. Yeah, yeah that's China, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the level of shit we're dealing with yeah. here. I mean, you know, like, remember I, I said, I called it. I said, I believe in the next five years, China's going to end up kind of like a North Korea with more money. Sure. We're really ending up in that position mm. these days. Mm-hmm. It's really just that. Yeah. This is the kind of shit you'd see on North Korean social media. Yeah, you would. I don't know about you, but I'm shaking in my boots. I don't quite understand what the purpose of that exercise is. <laughs> we have a Kim Jong Un now. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? This is like this guy, Kim Jong Un. <laughs> he is. <laughs> you know what? This gives me Gaddafi vibes. Yeah, in a way. Training his like female soldiers. Although those are like actually strong, tall women, right? Yeah. yeah. They just pick some random yeah. net- netizens for this one. Yeah. Feel like. Anyway, that was yeah. Uh, so uh, just ridiculous. wanted to give you that clip was going around. I just wanted to highlight yeah. how unbelievably clownish and stupid. Yeah, that's that just was. so silly. Yeah. So <clears throat> what's going on here? Well, People's Daily, as you guys yeah. know, is one of China's biggest propaganda outlets, right? Yeah. And I always like to give an update on what People's Daily looks like. This is not the translated one. This is the English one. Yeah, they put out an English one and a Chinese yeah. one. This is for you to see. Yeah. Just always like to check my daily headlines here. Uh, what is the banner there saying? Xi Jinping, I will fully commit to the people and never fail them. That's a I, permanent banner, by the way. I like how he says, I will fully commit. Yes. That means he hasn't. He hasn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day when I retire, you know. Yes. Well, my mate doll. Yeah, exactly. But when it when it happens, I will be there for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just love that. Like, we are getting to very Kim levels of, of bullshit. Oh, absolutely. It's Cult of Personality. You know that sick song, Cult of Personality? Is that sure. By? I don't know. Cult of Personality. You know, like, yeah, I know the song. Yeah. Living Color. That's it. Great color. tune. Um, we're, we're, achieve- we're achieving those levels now. Yeah. Did not have this under the last regime under mm-hmm. Hu Jintao. I, don't, no. I barely saw him. I think I saw him three times on the news. Yeah, he was never a big... He wasn't in the public eye. No, because yeah. it doesn't matter. Nope. This is where we're at. When they, when China's drank its own Kool-Aid to the point, or drank its own green beer, yeah. red beer, yeah. to the point <laughs> of uh, they're believing that this is what you want to see mm-hmm. <laughs> and what you will believe in. Yep. Number two, I wanted to highlight another thing on the front page. Yep. What do we got here? She's Russia trip to advance friendship, cooperation, that's, peace. That's in a little bit, but I wanted you to look at the oh, picture there. What is that? China's thing? AI industry <laughs> embraces new um, opportunities and, for development. Yeah. You know what? I, I wanted to throw out there. Mm-hmm. If anyone with eagle eyes can find out what bullshit that AI car is, uh, we could do another expose. Because remember when we ripped apart their entire AI agriculture industry? We yeah. literally ripped it to shreds to the point yeah. where we, with the help of subscribers, tracked down the 3D models that yeah, they so stole. Yes, that they used and stole. Like- to put on a fake hydrogen power. They tried to... They yeah, tried to convince you tractor. that they have a yeah. hydrogen power tractor that runs on 5G AI. Yes. yes. <laughs> and plants and like, the, the, you don't need traditional farmers anymore. You but it was just that. rubbish. Yeah, it's yeah. bullshit, fake stuff. I feel like we're, we're in the same boat with this one. What I see there is like a, I don't know, like a pet petroleum factory or something like that, some other factory, and a car that looks like it probably goes from A to B and delivers stuff or or does like menial tasks you know that that kind of crap automated factories with robots moving around has been around since what the, the late 60s yeah. early 70s yeah. where this is nothing new no. if what's ai about having a vehicle that goes from point a to point b that you can program it to go there and do something and come back i don't want to keep harping on about this but it's very important that people understand when they say this big ai push china's leading mm. the world you see western outlets talking about this mm. china's leading the world in ai yeah <clears throat> They are attributing AI, we're finding out very quickly, they're attributing AI to like 
toys yeah to like freaking gadgets that you buy on wish.com yeah all of this stuff gets encompassed in what they think is ai and it's not ai no ai stands for artificial intelligence that is not artificial intelligence a remote controlled vehicle or a dumb robot that goes from point a to b and you program it like logo and it's got sensors so it doesn't bump into things is not artificial intelligence they're they're saying that there's billions of dollars going into ai agriculture industry Mm -hmm. and you know what that is they're saying security cameras pointed at the crops so that the farmers can look on their phone or on their computer to see their crops through a camera. That's AI. It's not. It's just normal information technology stuff. Yeah. It's nothing to it's do with AI. IT. Yeah, it's a. It's just rubbish. They're making this, this name so it sounds fancy and good. Yeah, that's you know? just mm. like the freaking green technology industry yeah. in China. Yeah. You know, you say you're you say you're putting all this money into green tech and you build like uh, seven thousand solar panels in the middle of a forest that are not hooked up to anything, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden you're leading the world in green tech. I know, right? It's, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, they just go on about the usual stuff, complaining yeah, about just, Japan and that always kind like of to thing. give people an update at the front mm-hmm. page of mm-hmm. the news. This is kind of a little bit concerning, but it's yeah. something we we very much have to talk about, you guys. Let's talk about this thing called dual purpose. Yeah. Okay. China loves this idea of dual purpose technology. Yep. In other words, it's technology that is actually meant for a purpose, but they can pretend it's for something else. Not, spy balloon. Yeah, not that yeah, the spy balloon is a great example, but not that long ago we talked about those green lasers, yeah. the LIDAR, uh, you know, shining down from a Chinese satellite into Hawaii. Yeah. Now, the satellite's supposed to be for monitoring pollution levels, which, mm. you know, I, I guess if you really want that, you know, it's fine. Sure. But of course, if it's supposed to be monitoring pollution levels, why is it firing green LIDAR lasers into the waters and and the areas around Hawaii? Well, probably looking for submarines, getting the topography, mapping things out, trying to map out the bases and stuff there. Um, You know, and that's the dual purpose nature of these things is what they can do is they can say it's for something, but use it for something else. And this is another great example is by, again, circumventing sanctions by sending, uh, you know, these rifles, assault rifles and so on and body armor and things through Turkey and the United uh, Arab Emirates uh, and labeling them as hunting rifles, you know, but they're actually assault rifles. In fact, it's an M16. It's like an AR-15 clone yeah. is what they ended up sending. That's not a hunting rifle. Although here in America, you'll get lots of people trying to pretend that that's like my full and assault rifle is just a I'm, hunting rifle. I turn deer into soup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, I mean, that's it, it's just ridiculous because you shouldn't be supplying weapons to Russia during a conflict like this, um, you know, and pretending it's hunting rifles. And body armor is definitely for military use as well. So. You, you tell me, you, when we go hunting deer, you don't put on body armor? That deer will F you up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and fire back and spit out <laughs> some of those high caliber rounds. Yeah, dude. You know? Deer well, with guns. We're in America after all. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I'm all for guns and uh, responsible ownership and use of them. I'm 100% for that. But, you know, I'm not for lying about the purpose for something. Russians don't need hunting assault rifles. If anything... They can make their own. You know, it's a little thing called an AK-47. Kind of comes from Russia, you know. But when you're in conflict like this and you need extra weapons because you're running out, that's when you buy them. Uh, just to catch everyone up, this is a massive deal because China promised that they weren't going to supply Russia with weapons. Mm. That they didn't, that they they uh, honor Ukraine's sovereign, sovereign territory yeah. mm-hmm. and they will not get involved in this conflict. And they've been supplying Russia this entire time. This is just another little receipt to show the rest of the world what China's actual ambitions are. Yeah. And guess what? Xi Jinping's going to meet Putin again. Yeah. It's laid bare, guys. And I don't know why everyone's thinking like China's got some, you know, very, uh, what's it, quixotic, like crazy ethereal goals that have, they've been crafting up for hundreds of years with their multilateral diplomacy with different countries. Mm. They've knee jerked in the wrong direction. Yes. And they picked mm. Russia. That's where we're at. I don't yeah. know why this is so complicated for people to understand. This is not some weird, intricate thing. China picked Russia. It is now China and Russia versus the rest of the world. That's we've, where we're at. We've seen them help Russia and break sanctions and, and help circumvent sanctions, yep. I could say, from the beginning of this conflict. Yep. And it doesn't matter what you believe in Ukraine. Uh, if you believe Ukraine's a bad Nazi harboring, you know, something or other, or if you think that they're in the right, or if you think Russia's in, that's got nothing to do with anything. It's about China being deceitful. Okay, and they have been deceitful from the very beginning. We can see earlier with the segment we did with the the pension issue, yeah. when there's something that China doesn't want you to see, they 
rub it out and they delete it off the internet and they find ways to um, hide it. Yeah. And this is what they do with this. Oh, how can we hide it? We don't. We want to send weapons to Russia. And by the way, the if you read the article of this, it's companies it's that are linked to uh, the Chinese government and the companies that are linked to the Russian government are the both the sellers and the recipients. So it's not like oh, some private no. hunter in <laughs> you know <laughs> in he Russia. He likes to melt bears. Yeah, exactly with <laughs> M16s or whatever. Body armor. Yeah, it's it's so nothing like that. But what they do is they instead of just sending it directly because that could be tracked or somebody could find out. They find proxies and they'll send it through like, you know, Turkey or United Arab Emirates and they'll write on it instead of like high powered like assault yeah. rifles, hunting mm-hmm. rifles yep. in case it gets inspected. And, you know, it goes through all these channels and that's how they circumvent it. It's just deception, smoke and mirrors, you yep. know. I don't You're know why. From the beginning. Again, I don't know why anyone's like still questioning the whole motive of China here. Xi Jinping yeah. loves Russia and vice versa, that yeah. they need each other at this point. Correct. They've created a, a new axis in a way. And the whole, remember the whole like Meng Wanzhou thing? Yeah. Where she got, uh, yeah. you know, arrested in Canada. Mm. When she got released, she signed the papers to say she was guilty yeah. of what she did. Yeah. And that was, she circumvented the the sanctions yep. to Iran by yep. selling, you know, equipment and chips and things, American stuff. And she lied to the banks about what she was doing. She was circumventing the, the sanctions. Again, just... You tell China, hey, this is illegal. You can't do this if you want to be part of the international world order. Hey, listen, this is the way we do things. We cannot sell things to North Korea, for instance, like that they can use against us in war. And so China's like, okay, I agree. Let's sign off. Now we're part of the international order. Then they're like, okay, let's just sell to North Korea. We literally just, were on the don't, border. Don't let anyone see. Don't let anyone see it. We were on the border when they had those sanctions enabled. Mm enacted and they go, went out there and said yes we're abiding by them 100 percent everyone's like okay cool everyone's uh, china's abiding by north korea sanctions so we yeah. can actually do some damage to the regime there yeah. we went to the north korean border and we saw thousands of trucks that were parked on either side yeah ready the to day, go at night yeah close off the bridge yeah and then at night guess what fire up the diesel trucks mm-hmm. trade resumes not only that they're not supposed to be hiring north koreans nope. in china nope. To, because then the money gets back into North Korea. Yep. We met North Koreans working in China. Yep. Okay? Nothing, there's, it's all full of shit. And North Korean minders from North Korea there in China to watch the North Korean employees. It's all just a farce. It's, it's terrible because you're dealing with a compulsive liar. You're dealing yep. with a de- deceiver here, the Chinese yep. government. The great deceiver. Yeah, they are. So anyway. Isn't that the devil or something? Yeah. <laughs> isn't that the, the, the name? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Anyway, the Chinese government's real bad. Mm-hmm. TLDR. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> pretty much the be all and the end all of that, right? <laughs> yeah. So anything else? Some, well, of course, we got lots of stuff here. Yeah. Up. Uh, yeah, I get it. But I mean, this is in... Uh, this is still like Wuma Corner? Yes, still okay. Wuma Corner. All right, I'll get us out of here. What is this? I want to tell you a story this. about this guy. Play this first. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. Grapes. Very yummy, very tasty. I like it. Good. I'm single. I'm handsome. I want to find a girlfriend here. Please help me. Thank you so much. Look how good I am. Very good. Very cool. Very handsome. I like it. Okay, pause it on him. Okay. Yeah, pause it there. It's fine. All right. So this is uh, James Cage White. That's a human interest story. Okay. Uh, a long time ago, he got really famous on the internet. I'm going to say 2013 or something. Maybe 10 years ago, right? Sure. Um, isn't that crazy that it was 10 years ago, 2013? Yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah. Anyway, this English-speaking Chinese guy shows up on Vine. Mm. Remember Vine? Mm-hmm. Is it Twitter-owned? I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah, anyway, it's kind of like TikTok before TikTok, right? Yeah. And he shows up on these short media websites, and he his catchphrase is very cool, very swag, I like it. And he took the world by storm. People thought he was funny and, mm-hmm. you know, was, he would he would go through life. He's very clearly like, I'm going to say definitely, probably, I'm going to say probably on the spectrum, right? Okay. But it was, he's charming, right? Yeah. And, and he was funny. funny. He'd always pick a funny little and says, I like dogs. Very cool. Very swag. I like him. Pet a dog, right? right? Very simple content. But then people kept following him even after right. Vine and like he moved on to TikTok, to YouTube, to Twitter. And he has obviously has a VPN. Yeah. He's from <clears throat> Northeastern China. He's from Qingdao. Right. And, uh. We watched him <clears throat> turn from this guy that's doing funny stuff, you know, walking around saying, very cool, very swag, I like it, to he's in this arranged marriage, and he starts telling details about his life, and it really, like, it becomes a soap opera, really. Right. Ends up in this uh, arranged marriage, has a kid that he names Charles Peter. Okay. Everyone's, like, latching onto him and his family and stuff, and then he tells his the internet, his fans, like, what's the drama of his wife, and all this kind of stuff, right? It becomes yeah. this real-life soap opera. And... uh 
I guess his wife leaves him, <laughs> takes okay. the kid. It becomes this horribly depressing thing, and he starts e-begging. Okay. He gets addicted to Steam games and porn. Okay. Just, then... like, crashing down, right? Very worth looking into, James Cage White. Interesting story. Right. People have done documentaries about him. Anyway, he had a post the other day, which I found was absolutely hilarious, and brought back some old China energy. Okay. Because, you know, if China's famous for anything, it's going to be knockoffs. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Knockoff luxury goods. Yeah. Let's have a look at this oh, one. Oh, this motor bike. It looks very real, very cool, very swag. I like it. So this is uh, <laughs> his his post here. I guess this is a ripoff of Canada Goose. Okay, yeah. you know Canada Goose jackets? Yeah, of course. Very, uh, very well known. Very popular with the Asians. Mm, like yeah. Asian people love that love that jacket. Well, they're famous mm. in China. It's one of those things. If you're going to get a warm jacket, it's like the LV of jackets, yes, right? So the rich it's people expensive. buy them. Yeah. It's got real wolf fur or coyote yeah. fur or something on it. Yeah, um, the coyote. It doesn't have goose in it. Yeah, on the on the edge. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was gonna. Like, no, you're putting like, like goose stuff, feathers. You're stuffing it with like no. coyote fur. No, my, you know, around the hood. Yeah, okay. It's not you. like goose feathers hanging. Out <laughs> no, no. Yeah, right. I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> that would be some other thing. Yeah. That's a different yeah. culture. Right, right, right. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> they stuffed this this shit with goose feathers. Right? Yeah, yeah. I had a can't get out of goose jacket. My nice. wife, my wife bought me one. Ages ago, it's very expensive. Yeah, not something I would normally buy. Yeah. Anyway, very popular in China slash when Asian people go to cold countries, right? Yeah, they, they buy these if they have money. And he had one. He's not even trying to make a joke here. Yeah, I guess he got a knockoff version of that. It's been a while since I've seen knockoffs. We don't live in China anymore. I don't see yeah. knockoffs that much anymore. But yeah, uh, this one is called Golder Cock, mm -hmm. um, which has a Canadian leaf that is the German flag. Yes, it yeah. says skiing mm -hmm. Alps. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and has. A rooster. A rooster. That is red, not gold. Golder cock. <laughs> but I like that it's golder. Yeah. It's, it's more golder gold. than a normal. Yeah, it's more gold than a normal <laughs> normal one, yeah. Oh, that was great. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, anyway. That, that was like a very big lead up to a little joke. <laughs> because I want people, if they're interested, to go check them out. It's, All right. a, it's a fascinating story of a, mm. of a Chinese guy with a VPN that's been on the Western internet for 10 plus years now. Yeah. Pretty gotcha. funny. Excellent. So I guess it's time for us to move on then to Worldview, guys. Yes. This is where we talk about everything in the world that has got something to do with China. Um, there's something we do before that, though. Mm, yeah, that is true. If this does actually work. Man, you like these gaps to be long. I like a good gap. Yeah. Just let you know. Bridge the gap. Take a, take a breather. <laughs> guys, we had such a lot of fun this Monday. Oh, we did. Um, now, okay, we just got to show you this. And if you want to know the context behind this next clip... You're going to have to go Is watch it? the show, okay? <laughs> Let's take a look at this quickly, all right? Some of us don't know English properly. Can and then uh, Honorable we Matisse? can only come and say, Honorable Hong, Matisse? Hong, 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 like that Honorable member. Matisse? Yes. Hong, Hong, Hong. Honorable Matisse? Hong, Hong, Hong. Honorable Matisse? That's the only thing Point that she honor. knows. Honorable Matisse? Yes. <laughs> hold on. Yeah, hold okay. On. So can you pause it on him? Yeah, Hon yeah. The, he's known as the Honorable Magician. Yeah, Honorable Madisha. Yeah. Yeah, Magician. <laughs> okay, as, sure. As the subscribers have yeah, declared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> 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 this has got to be yeah. one of the most absurd things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And I wanted you guys to know that we have a show every Monday. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's on it'll, uh, Patreon. It'll come yeah. up. Oh, yeah. Patreon.com forward slash ADB podcast. podcast. Yeah. And what we do is every Monday we have another show. So this is our Friday show. We yeah. have a Monday show. It's totally separate. It's a mm -hmm. whole show. Yeah. Uh, half of the half of the show, we do uh, a full-on topic, usually yeah. expose type stuff, stuff that we can't put on YouTube because we'll probably yeah. get in trouble. <laughs> I don't sure. know, like dicey stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we've exposed the sex doll industry in China. We've exposed the fake alcohol industry in China. Yeah. We do full-on things there. Yeah, it's usually stuff that's just not, it's not related to like right now in the news things. It's Yeah. And like you say, it's things that we can't really show, Yeah, uh, you know, publicly. It's definitely YouTube. a spicier show. Sure. Sure. Than, than the China show. But anyway, mm -hmm. I digress because we also don't only necessarily cover 100% China issues yeah. because you brought us straight in behind the doors of the South African yeah, parliament. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to share some of my homegrown, you know, politicians. Yes. And so we, we did the, the Dude, Hong Hong thing. The South African parliament is lit. <laughs> it it's, is the funnest place in the world. Yeah. I would love to be a part of it. It's just I would hilarious. love to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> and in this show, you will be able to be a fly on the wall. Yeah, so if you want to know anything, like what's going on with this Hong Hong thing, 
You'll have to watch the show from uh, Monday. It's outlandish. Monday. Yeah. We had. Pe- I just want to want to say the people that had joined in were like, "What are we watching?" And then after they finished the clip, mm-hmm. everyone walked away absolutely <laughs> in love with this this show. <laughs> yeah, the honorable magician, honorable magician, said. and the yeah. whole debate that goes down here is yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it is. Anyway. What we did on this week's show yeah. is we had a soundbite uh, yeah. well, elimination challenge. Let's take challenge. a look at the, the rest of it. Hong, hong, like that <laughs> Honorable member. Matisa. Yes. Hong, hong, hong. Honorable Matisa. Hong, hong, hong. Honorable Matisa. That's the only thing Point that she knows. Order. Honorable Matisa. Yes. Sound, soundbite bracket championship elimination. The whole point is at the end to find out what is the best sound bite of the China show lore. Nice. Wow, dude, it's what? the 50-50. I'll just split. Wow, so good. Oh, who's the winner? Wow. So good. That's a close one. <laughs> That's insane. Look at this poll result, guys. That's bloody outrageous. It is neck and neck, guys. Okay, so- it is literally down to the wire here, guys. Wow. That's a little too much for me. Oh, oh, the final vote came in. And it's 51 to 49% with a victory for. Buzz it there. Sure. So you guys know we love a good soundbite mm. on this show. And one thing that makes our show special is that our soundbites usually come with video clips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a very like uh, media forward yeah. soundbites. And uh, we went through every historical soundbite on the China show. And we had a live updated bracket. Kind of like you yeah. would do in like March Madness or a sports competition. Yeah. And we pitted them against each other in a random seed. And then it, you guys voted on every single competition until yeah. we weeded all of them out and came up with a winner. Yeah, so we have the winner, which we're not going to tell you. Yes. Um, Please don't spoil it if you're a part of the show. Yeah, exactly. But uh, if you want to know the actual winner, and this is actually going to change the way we're going to deal with the uh, soundboard yeah. in, in the near future because we have to rearrange it to put the most popular ones back. Yeah. And we'll be adding. We're going to be adding yeah. them. I mean, like I did add... Which one did I add? I added this... You know, water cooler diplomacy. I just added that one. There'll be more that'll be added, of yeah. course. Um, but that's what Monday's show was all about. It anyway. was so fun, seriously. Yeah, and super it, fun. If you join, we did not edit like no. that. No, <laughs> there's a bug. Yeah. Um, if Wait, you... <laughs> well, one more, one oh, more sorry. thing though. I withdraw that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, we throw it. I <laughs> <laughs> he can't hold it back, can he? He <laughs> can't hold it back. Wait, one more time. One more time. Yeah. This is him with dry. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. I withdraw that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, we throw it. I honor of Matisa. <laughs> she's so mad yeah she's so salty honorable yeah. magician is a real real dick yeah exactly anyway like i said if you want to know more about the the, the hong hong honorable magician thing uh yeah check out uh Xiaobanho. you can go to yeah. patreon.com forward slash adv podcast and join the uh Shaban Ho tier if you have the means of course um, david lepin said i would draw the truth <laughs> I would yeah. draw this truth. Yes. Uh, I would draw please, this truth. please join yeah. because not only is it the best way to, to support the channel, but also you get access to all 30, now 35 episodes. 37. 37 it? episodes. You can go back and literally watch all of them. They're all in the patron feed. Yeah. And we, we also have an audio only tier as well. So if you want to just listen to it, you can listen to it too. It's a half price. Yeah. So half price, you get the audio version. Mm-hmm. Full price, you get to be part of the live show and the video version. Yeah. Definitely check it out. I highly recommend you. I, if, if you do anything, at least sign up for this uh, soundbite battle. Yeah. And home. Yeah, it was fun. Mr. Home. Super, super fun. All yeah. right. So uh, what are we doing here? This is still Worldview, right? So yes. um, what did Wang Wenbin have to say? Let's see. Okay, let's see. Chinese for- This is the subtitle. Chinese Foreign Minister Ministry Spokesman Wang Wenbin accused the U.S. of spreading disinformation and suppressing TikTok. Let's Who's Wang Wenbin? Oh, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's right. He's Moister Wong. Moister Wong. (laughs) Yeah, basically, he's the, as you know, the foreign ministry spokesperson. Yeah. So what do you have to say? TikTok. 停止无理打压有关企业，为各国企业在美投资经营提供开放、公平、公正、非歧视的营商环境。
Isn't so, it? Moister Wong here, what did he say? Wow. What did he say? Okay, again. Leave that up as we talk. Well, I, I just want to look at the subtitles again sure, because yeah, yeah, good idea. It, it makes me mad. It makes me irritate. Yeah, it does. Makes me irritate at the mission So, he said, um, let's see, basically, he's, he's moaning about the US the whole time. But It's uh, insanity if we actually look. We'll break it down in a second, but what did he say? Data security should not be used by a certain country to abuse the national security concept and state power to suppress foreign companies, which is what China does. So what they're saying is the U.S. shouldn't claim national security issues yeah. for stopping TikTok. Yes. Right. That, that's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. I think if you watched this and you had zero context, yeah. you would be like, all right, all right sure. Interests of fairness, you know, fair mm -hmm. free trade, open trade. You guys understand how insane this is? Yeah. Go to my slide. Yeah, well, just a hey, couple more sure. things he says here. The U.S. has yet to present evidence that TikTok's threat threatens it, not, its national security. What are you talking about? You know, China's yet to present evidence that Instagram, you know, threatens its national security yeah. or Facebook yeah. or yeah. anything. You know what that reminds me of? Uh, people that say, yeah. mainstream media didn't talk about that, you know, yeah. just, and it's on like the cover of New oh, York CNN, Times. Or yeah. Whatever, yeah. The U.S. should stop spreading disinformation about data security. Mm -hmm. Stop unreasonably suppressing the relevant company and provide an open, fair... Oh, and non-discriminatory environment for foreign businesses to invest and operate in the U.S. How about doing that in China? There's no open, fair, honest, and non-discriminatory environment for foreign companies yeah, and businesses let's go to, to let's invest go in, and operate in the U.S. Yeah, it's just, the wording is just it's... absolutely ridiculous. Okay, Mr. Wang Wenbin. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Water Cooler Diplomacy. Yeah. You've claimed that the U.S. can't block or force the sale of TikTok because it's unfair, mm. right? And you can't use national security as an excuse to do yeah. that, right? And yet, China, the Chinese government for whom you're speaking about, yeah, on behalf of blocks, Facebook, Google, Pinterest, Quora, Twitter, Line, Netflix, YouTube, Reddit, Wikipedia, WhatsApp, Drop to Instagram, Dropbox. Yeah. Drop I mean, this is literally just a, a taste. This yeah, is like yeah. a, an appetizer. Spotify, yeah. Uh, try 70% of the internet, Yeah, right? You're talking about, uh, speaking on behalf of the country that blocks Slack. all of these things and then nobody, nobody's complaining about having no access to China. They block, they have blocked all of this. Yeah. Not with the interest of national security, just for no reason. Just because they want to censor this stuff for their own people. I mean, also... There's another thing. Let's just say, I don't know, um, Netflix gets blocked in China, right? You don't have Biden sending out the secretary yeah, press yeah. release to yeah. say China should not interfere with the free, you know, open spread of Netflix into your country. You know, people keep saying like... Netflix isn't a psyop. It isn't actually like part of the government, right? You know, people keep saying like, or people in the Chinese government keep saying, TikTok has nothing to do with the Chinese government. Stop blocking this. It's unfair. If you have the Chinese state going out on the highest of highest levels of diplomacy yeah. in their media channel saying, don't block TikTok, then I think you got your answer laid bare. You know what else is blocked in China? <laughs> what? TikTok. Yeah, next slide, please. <laughs> the absolute, you know, just in case you thought that every other app being blocked wasn't hypocritical <laughs> enough. Yeah. China blocks TikTok. Yeah. They block TikTok. They do. They're saying American government don't block TikTok. It's but not they, fair. Blocked... they block TikTok. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who don't can't really understand that because you might have heard of Douyin. Yeah. Douyin is is more or less the same company. Okay, it's the same yeah, company. Dance, yeah. But it's a different product. I mean, yeah. think about it like you know when you've got um, you buy Ford yeah. in, in like Europe. Yeah. But you you buy a Ford car, but it's not actually a Ford. It's like no. a, a Mazda, a Mazda yeah. or a yeah. Peugeot or something yeah. with a Ford logo on yeah. it. It's something like that, you yeah. know? So it may be under the same company, but it's a completely different product. You see, the TikTok one is basically there. It's much more open than the Chinese one. It's not as censored, but it's also works in a different way um, to the, the Chinese version. So they are basically different Analysts have, have seen that the American version of TikTok, which well, the algorithm... TikTok. Yeah, the American version. Oh, okay. I mean, TikTok, because it's in other countries. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. 
the Ameri- uh, you know, the American one, the American American algorithm for TikTok, con- which is controlled by the Chinese government. Yes, it's yeah, I'm not joking. Yeah, absolutely. you know, the ByteDance has this, they have the CCB has stake in their company. Yeah, has they've proven or they've at least witnessed that negative content is shown to minors in America, whereas positive content is pushed on China's version of TikTok, Douyin. Yeah, Douyin. Yeah. So, China blocks TikTok. Their own, their because own they website. don't want it to their yeah, own, their own program to corrupt their own youth. They don't want their own program to corrupt their own youth. <laughs> yeah, they want to yeah. censor their own program that yeah. they use to weaponize in other countries. Yeah. If you haven't seen, if you have not seen why everyone should get rid of TikTok slash there should be a forced transfer, mm-hmm. then I don't know how to convince you otherwise. I this mean, yeah. is a is a, a country that wants the downfall of America, and that, I know that sounds like tinfoil hat. This is actually the truth. Yeah. That wants to see the world burn and it wants to be reign supreme in that world. A neo-imperialist, neo-colonialist country that the CCP is running now. Yep. And they want to use apps like this to make sure that they can control the narrative around the world. And if you haven't seen that yet, I don't know how to convince you. Yeah, and I mean, just look at the way they're complaining about America potentially banning uh, TikTok in America, but they ban it themselves. It's their insanity. Own, their own app. Yeah is blocked in their own country because it would corrupt the youth. You know or it bullshit? would be too much freedom of speech or, you know, they couldn't control it or whatever. You know what's bullshit? Where's the questions asking about that? Yeah. You know, like you have a press release, like you have like, uh, you know, Biden's department or whatever goes out there and says a speech and people are like, uh, yeah. excuse me, did you, you know, mention about the refugee children on the board and blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, Hunter we Biden's gonna... laptop or whatever. Something like that, right? Yeah. Here, where is the follow-up questions? Where's... Uh, why do you block TikTok in China and all of the other American and other foreign programs? Yeah, and then complain that it's unfair if they block one thing from you. Yeah, where? Yeah, where are the where's follow-up the, questions? Where's the questions? And more, more importantly, why is no one asking these questions? These very basic questions. And I think it's because they've been fooled. Yeah. I think a lot of people that live in the free world, they don't realize this, and so they read something where, or they see the Chinese government say it's unfair to block our our apps in your country that. and and they're like yeah you know what that is unfair this is government censorship we should not be this is supposed to be the land of the free we yeah. should be allowing people to you know engage in fair yeah. trade and stuff bullshit okay they block that same app they're complaining about yeah. it's got nothing to do with free trade no and with what's been going on with tiktok if you don't know by the way um tiktok themselves they tried to hide it but they eventually admitted that uh you know they're uh, managers and so on in Beijing can access the user data of Americans in America on demand, okay? And they've done it in the past. And specifically when they were trying to follow uh, journalists that were currently like, you know, yeah, they wanted to see if any of their members were meeting up with journalists, right? They were, not only that, they were tracking the, in, in the browser function, tracking to a keystrokes. Yeah. It's bad, dude. It's super bad. So, I mean, they could use, you know, they were like, oh, we know that these employees might be leaking our data. So in in China, they're like, well, let's go and see these journalists that work for all these big, you know, organizations that are going to report on this. Let's get their IP address so we can get their location information so that we can see if our employees met up with them because they're tracking the employees, obviously. And they're like, oh, they both went to that Starbucks in that place. Now we know who's leaking the data, you know, that kind of thing. They were doing that. Yeah. You want a little yeah. icing on the cake? Sure. I made a TikTok. Yeah, I made some uh, some TikTok videos about uh, criticism of the CCP, very mild ones. Yeah, I was permanently banned. Yep. So if you want to say, oh, it's different, they always, you know, TikTok bite dance. So I said, oh, it's different. Like we use different laws, you know, according to the regulations of each country. Mm-hmm. Go, go f yourself, dude. Like well, absolute I mean, nonsense. They love to jump on the like anti discrimination yep. laws or something in whichever country to oh, use yeah. it against oh, yeah. people that uh, criticize the CCP. But anyone who criticizes the host country or anything, yep. no, I that's a, fine. I made a video about how China, the Chinese government is persecuting Uyghurs, right? Yeah. yeah. I got removed for hate speech. Yeah. I spoke up for the minority that's being persecuted by an evil government in China and I got removed for hate speech. That's right. Yeah. It's bullshit. It is. So you're censoring on behalf of the Chinese government in America. It, on all fronts, TikTok is effed, dude. Well, I mean, I just say we should just do what the Chinese government does and ban TikTok. Yeah, or force the sale. Yeah, well, same same deal, really. Yeah. yeah. They, should take, they should take the money. Take the money and run. <laughs> yeah. So um, wh- why do you have uh, Xi Jinping's win here? Is that because so, no one could talk about it? Yes. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> insane. Yeah. So you would think... Mm-hmm. That, you know, the Chinese government just going out there and being so blatant, 
Usually yeah. there's a couple like votes that say like, yeah, we're against it or whatever. This yeah. is the internal CCP vote, right? Yeah, to, but, to, but it's public. This was in yeah. the two sessions, right? Yeah. So it's like, do we say that Xi Jinping could be the, the leader for a third term, even though yes. it's not supposed yes. to? 2,952 people said yes. Zero people said no. And, and zero, zero people, people abstained. Were absent. Yeah. yeah. They just went all yeah. in. Remember when I said Kim Jong-un? We're mm -hmm. in the Kim territory now. Yeah. We're talking 17 shots for an 18-hole golf course. Yep. This is the level of fantasy we're at in China now. Mm -hmm. So where no one disagreed. Yep. Or the, the po there's no power vacuum. It's just Xi Jinping now. It is just Xi Jinping. Get ready for some really bad shit to happen in China in the yeah. next 10 years. Anyway, um, the funny thing about this yep. was that... They didn't even allow people to talk about the results. Yeah. There is a hashtag going around in China that was hashtag 2952. Right. And it was going around because people in China were like, wow, congrats. Like some people were even congratulatory. Wow. You know, there's yeah, no opposition. Amazing. That's great. But a lot of sarcasm. But a lot of people are saying like, wow, what a display of democracy. And I wish. It's so amazing. You know, yeah. stupid America doesn't have things like, you know, such a unified populace like we do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, like kind of sarcastic remarks. And it was mm. going viral. People were yeah. saying hashtag 2952 and they wiped it. You couldn't even talk about the no, two you, sessions you results. You couldn't talk about his, him being <laughs> elected anymore. Because too many people were taking the piss out of it. So they had to censor that. It's insane. It also shows you what bullshit, because if your average person could vote in China, they wouldn't all be voting for him. Yikes. And this isn't even a vote. This is yeah. internal CCP This is vote. not a vote. It's no. literally not. Anyway, that was hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely hilarious. Love to see it's it. It's a dual purpose. Well, they're dual purpose thing again, once again. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're going to do this because then we can... Put him back in power, but yeah, and, the, and at the same time pretend there's some some modicum of uh, democracy. Yeah, yeah, that's that's know? the idea is that they call it whole process democracy, but people can't even talk about the results of the internal thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, isn't it ridiculous? <laughs> oh, I love this uh, meme; it's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's so very apt. you got uh, you know a sort of communist dude over there saying we're banning Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, haha, and, and you know the rest of the world's okay. The rest of the world says, we're banning TikTok. You cannot do that. That's racist, xenophobe, anti-Asian, U.S. imperialism. You're just jealous of us. And that is actually a very accurate look it's at the so, discourse surrounding so this. So accurate. How is it like anti-Asian or racist to, to want to ban, you know, a program, Government an side app, up. an app that really is bad, you know? It's insane. I saw some debate about this on some mm -hmm. really big uh, news networks in the U.K., mm -hmm. Um, there's the, the pro CCP stance was so hypocritical and stupid. Yeah. It's just so wrong. I mean, when you break it down to something as simple as this meme, it really does just show you yeah. how ridiculous this whole thing is. Yeah. I mean, if TikTok wasn't a danger to national security, it wouldn't be a problem. You no. know what I mean? No, of course not. Anyway. So, uh, did you, do you have anything else in our little pack over here? Or Big is that that? Today. Oh yes. Of course we have oh, to this talk is your about segment. Miles Guo. Okay. By the way, we each, uh, we, like I'll throw together the media pack or whatever, but we each have segments that we make. Yeah. And I want people to know there's different styles and flares. <laughs> it's not completely, you know, we, we do yeah. certain things. So I think most people probably know who uh, Miles Guo, Guo Win Gui, Miles Kwok. He's got a bunch of names that he calls himself, um, who he is, right? And I'll give you a little bit of a background. He is actually uh, a corrupt billionaire from China, real estate tycoon, okay? And uh, let me just make sure I get these charges right. So in 2014, he fled to America because he found out that um, he was accused of corruption by the Chinese authorities, and he learned that he was going to be arrested under the allegations of bribery, kidnapping, money laundering, fraud, and rape, okay? That's quite a lot of uh, charges. But again, coming from the CCP, yeah. How much of that do you believe, right? Exactly. So that, that was the idea. Now, the thing is, he, he was, and, well, I don't know, it is, but he was a CCP member. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. He, he was a public servant, and then he became this uh, real estate tycoon, billionaire in yep. China. And so he was like the 73rd most rich person in China or something. So, you know, we're talking a lot of money here. And come on, we all know that if you're going to be earning a lot of money and you're a government official and so on in China, there's definitely bribery and all that crap's involved. That's just how it works, okay? So we can say that there were legitimate charges against him. Yeah. But you could legitimately charge anyone in the CCP with those things. So, you know, yes. again, it's dual purpose. It's this yeah. whole thing where, you know. Anyway, so the guy flees to the USA and he applies for asylum, okay? And 
of course, this is what's going to happen. When you've got a con man, and he is a con man, um, when you've got a con man like that, he needs to save his own skin. And the best way for him to save his own skin is to come to America, claim asylum, and then at the same time be like, listen, I need protection here. So I'm yeah. going to give you secrets about the CCP. I'm going to show you the corruption of the CCP. I'm going to reveal things about the CCP, which he did. Yeah. And uh, he revealed a bunch of internal information about the the Communist Party of China. And then he kind of got a name for himself for being this sort of anti-CCP um, zealot, really. Because obviously that's what he has to do to solidify his place, you know, solidify his asylum and to get all of his support. Yep. So there's a lot of truth in what he said, and there's also a lot of fabrication of falsehoods too. Yeah. But that's not the reason we're talking about this is he's just recently been arrested for uh, a billion dollar fraud, okay, where he's defrauded people here in America so, and well around the, the globe, really. I guess the, some of the stuff he was being accused of in China. Was... Well, I mean, look, if you're a con man <laughs> and you make your money through tricking people yeah. and bribery and all this bullshit, that's that's what you know, right? Grifter's gonna grift. Grifter's gonna grift. So he came to know his one true love when he moved to America, though. So yeah, we all know that he got <laughs> he got together with. We uh, shall fraud together. <laughs> yeah, we shall fraud together. He got together with his um, one true love, Steve Bannon, and oh, they they gosh. put together a little media company. Okay, and uh, he actually hired Steve Bannon for as a consultant and paid him, you know, I think a million dollars for a year and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. And whoever knows, they lots of money. So what is that? The sovereign state of China or some shit? They put together these different media companies. And the thing is, they took advantage of the, um, the, the need of many people to fight against the CCP, okay? People like ourselves who are against the CCP, we didn't fall for it, okay? We were actually invited more than once to appear on Steve Bannon's show, yeah. okay? And to be involved in this kind of junk. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. Yeah. Like, we've never expressed our opinion about this whole Miles Gua thing from mm. the beginning because... To bring attention to this, what we thought was grift from the yeah, beginning, from the beginning yeah. is is actually detrimental because if you push people towards that direction, people are like, you know what, they have a point. Yeah. You know what I mean? We've had bad vibes about this from day one. Yeah. From day one internally, me and you. Yeah. No, I mean, if you're going to call your show a war room. Oh, we're not just, that's what I meant about Miles yeah, Gore as yeah, well. Yeah, Miles Gore and all that. You just, I'm just, out, bro. just rather <laughs> I'm not, out. you know, may as well go on InfoWars at that point. You know yeah, what I mean? War Room InfoWars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. War. Yeah, exactly. War Voice. Yeah, it could be anything like that. <laughs> so, I mean. <laughs> New uh, Federal State of China, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. So, um, unfortunately, he get, he, he gar garnered a lot of support yeah. from, from people who are against the CCP and he took advantage of them, especially Chinese diaspora. It's actually a perfect victim story. Think about it. Yeah. You're like, you're in the CCP. Yeah. They victimize you and they yeah. make you like an example of we're going to go after you and take all this ill-gotten gain slash maybe even hit you with charges you, you don't deserve, right? Yeah. Then you, you get this asylum story. Yeah, look at me. And I'm like, I hate the CCP. I'm reformed. I changed. Yeah. I'm going to make this new China yeah. and it's going to be better. It's going to be free, right? Yeah. But then I got wicked sus. Yeah, I mean, they, what was he doing? Well, they started all sorts of conspiracies about how COVID, came, yeah. where COVID came from. They also bought that um, that so that that the scientist, you know. From yeah, that's Hong that's Kong. another thing. I was more talking about so, Tang Biao. Oh yeah, Tang Biao. So anyway, Tang Biao is a the dissident, and this is where things kind of went a bit awry. There are some dissidents living in America, like legitimate human rights lawyers. And yeah, let me stuff. clear this up real quick. Remember, yeah. his whole thing was. Pro China human rights, anti CCP. That was his masquerade, right? Yeah, which is yeah. a it's a very valiant thing, sure, right? And something I could get behind, right? Um, we saw some missteps yeah, along the way. Unfortunately, like actual dissidents that were living in the states and in Canada and, and various other countries, he started to target them. Yeah, because they were like anti CCP dissidents. Yeah, they were speaking out against him. Yeah. And so what he would do is he'd target them and get his followers, of which he had many, many, many to go and pick it outside their houses and uh, intimidate them and do things like that, which really goes against his message. Yeah. Because if you're talking about like a human rights lawyer like Tung Biao, um, who had been arrested in China and who was very much against the CCP and, you know, his actual human rights guy, if he's targeting people like that, and he didn't deny that mm. he sent the people out to do it, and he got people to pick it outside his house for like weeks and 
you know, scream and shout at him and intimidate him and things like that. He's just... He went after the anti-CCP dissident. Yeah, it's just, it's mixed signals, right? It's, it's like... It's weird. What are you doing, bro? So anyway, look, the, the be-all and the end-all of this whole thing is that he set up a, a company and he offered shares in the company, but the company wasn't listed. So what he would do is he got people to invest in this company right. that wasn't a real, it's vaporware. Right. Speaking of vaporware, he also set up like the Tibetan, the Himalayan exchange cryptocurrency thing. He set up his own coin, which was also just a bunch Shit of bullshit. Coin. Yeah. It just had nothing, like, again, it's just like, hey, I've got a coin, yeah. invest in it without like actually having anything of any value to give to people. And he also opened up some kind of like... G Club, it was called. It's like an exclusive club that you could join for a very high rate. And then he would introduce you to, you know, people of influence and so on. But it turns out he didn't really do any of that stuff. He just took membership money. So this is the crux of it all is that there the guy has done a lot of fraudulent things. A billion dollars. To fraud. steal a lot of people's money and living at large. Yeah. Bought a massive mansion, 50,000 square meter mansion in in New York. Square foot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for square foot, whatever. Yeah, same thing except smaller. Three um, times smaller. Yeah, exactly. It's three <laughs> it's times huge. smaller. It's huge, 50,000 square foot. <laughs> yeah. What the, and he had what, the $3.5 million Ferrari? Yeah, and he bought a, what, a, a Bugatti as well? Bugatti. Like a $4.4 million Bugatti. Yeah. All this excessive nonsense that you would expect from like a what, corrupt. What was the yacht thing? Oh, yeah, $37 million yacht yeah, or something. something like he that. pays $2.2 million in, in like maintenance. maintenance. Yeah, it's, a, it's just stupid stuff. You can read it. We've got the Department of Justice link yeah, it's in the below. It's the best out of, out of all the articles. Yeah, I like the, the mobile blow. Yeah, go to the source. But basically what we're saying is you got a grifter, you've got a scum, like a scum con man, and he gets out, he runs away from one problem and he starts the same thing in another country. And, you know, that's, this is why in the beginning, um, I, honestly, when I first heard about the guy, I was very interested in him because I could understand that he was a scumbag, like, and that he was running away from real charges. It was pretty obvious. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. He's running away from being, you know, corrupt and bribery and stuff. But sometimes, as I learned, a, a policeman in South Africa once told me, sometimes you need a dark, you need light angel, uh, sorry, light devils to catch dark devils. In other words. You need to be a devil to catch a devil. Right, right. Right. You know what I mean? Like an evil. Yeah, an good, angel, yeah. an angel can't catch a devil because right. they don't think the same way. That makes sense. So yeah. his his whole thing is like police officers have to be scumbags in order to catch worse scumbags. Right, right. Did that right. make sense? That was the analogy that he told me. Right. Um, and so this is what I was thinking about him. He is a corrupt piece of shit, but he knows all about the corruption of the CCP and all that. So it's good to have someone like that to go after that type of thing. Sure. You know what I mean? But it was I but mean, turns out... Turns out he's just a corrupt piece of Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's yeah. pretty much the update on Guo Wenguei. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll, busted. See, we'll, see, we'll see where that goes, but it's... You know what I would do if I was trying to run away from the CCP is not go scam Americans for a billion dollars? Probably yeah. not a good idea. So... We also can't, cannot forget that his partner in crime is this dude. Yu, William... Yu Jin uh, Ming. Yeah, Yu Jin Ming, which I guess... His uh, Wei Giles name is King Ming Je. Yeah. William Je. How do you say Je? It's I definitely Je. I mean, I know the Chinese. Yeah. I don't know yeah, his me too. of yeah. this. Yeah. Anyway, he's uh, the other guy who's currently being indicted, um, you know, along with Guo. Mm. So just so you guys know the deal with that. Guess what? Mm. Don't commit crime. <laughs> Simple. Yeah. Don't, don't be a criminal. Don't be fraudulent. I mean, like if you, a lot of the ideas that he had, like let's set something up, like to go against the CTP or whatever. That's great, but do it properly. Yes. Actually register a company. It was, I, am I wrong? Right. But like, as I was reading the DOJ report, the mm -hmm. FBI recovered $650 million of yeah, the Yeah, they froze, assets. froze a bunch of bank okay, accounts. Okay. So at least stuff. some people are be getting their money yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. At least, but a that's A billion still, dollars of fraud. Yeah. It's pretty wild. What a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, what do you know? Well, corrupt Beijing, you know, corrupt uh, Chinese official. Have fun in jail. Escapes to America and turns out to just be a corrupt businessman. Have fun in jail. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll see how it all goes. It'll be yeah. interesting to follow. Well, he's been arrested, so. Yeah, I know. But, you know, maybe they'll let him off on a technicality and then he'll sue us. 
<laughs> for what? Reporting a DOJ report? Yeah, they, they, they'll, <laughs> liquidate, so. they'll liquidate our, like, our microphones and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. They'll be able to get like $700 out of all of our yeah. equipment and be like, yes. Uh, they, they read a public ava- publicly available <laughs> DOJ report. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, guys, uh, it's time for the Q&A, all right? This is uh, Yamcha, where we get to answer your questions and you question our answers. Let's chill, guys. It is uh, St. Patrick's Day after all, right? Is yes. that today or tomorrow? It's today. That's oh, it's why today. we're drinking right. green beer. Yeah, I, I'm. By the way, St. Patrick's Day is also huge in South Africa. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think just anywhere really where people like to drink because it's like the biggest excuse for drinking. It I don't is. think it has any other purpose. I really don't. It's for Irish people. No, but I mean, Their sure, whatever. Saying. Like, I get that part. Yeah. But oh, you mean outside of? Uh, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying. Like, why else do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day? I'm gonna assume most people just want to drink. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. I mean, what's with all the like? gaudy like green beads and the the dye and the beer and stuff it's just about drinking people aren't being like oh let's bring this fluffy hat and beads and stuff and then go walk sober around the place oh look at the flowers lovely it's a wee little leprechaun over there i'm just waiting (laughs) i'm just waiting for the ireland slander to come out because you have a very bad track record with that no i don't nothing irish people are just chomping at the bit to get their hands Mm. on you no no i love irish people yeah Keep saying stuff about them, man. <laughs> what do they well, like to do? <laughs> eat potatoes, drink beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but there's nothing wrong with that. I I eat no. potatoes and beer. I drink beer though. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I do think that St. Patrick's Day is literally only about drinking. Okay, I do. I mean, and unless that's, and that's you. That's your. You opinion. know, like the parades and stuff. Well, what are you gonna do? Like, go, if you really like care about the saint, go pray in the church about him or something. You know. That's what I you do. You pray about him. Yeah, you like St. Patrick. Pray to that, him. You're like, that guy, St. Patrick, man, he deserves more credit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah pray about you him. Pray to pray about him. Yeah. <laughs> Hope he's like, doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's, uh, <laughs> let me explain to you how this works, guys. Uh, this this whole Q and A thing, the Yum Chat, stays up for the weekend. On Monday, we cut it out of the show. So if you're not here with us live, or if you're not watching on the weekend, we bid you adieu. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Stay awesome.